find this to be really rewarding. So today we're talking about CX, EX, and PX intersections, meaning customer experience, employee experience, and partner experience, and how they all work together and actually have a lot of lessons learned that we can uh, be sharing among these. Uh, please join us in upcoming weeks. We'll be talking about uh, employee experience, partner experience, and customer experience in further detail, all in brief LinkedIn live sessions that are free to you and available to share with your uh, colleagues and uh, chain of command to bring them into the, the party of understanding experience leadership. Well, I'm so excited to talk about uh, your key stakeholders. Customers, employees, and partners are probably the, the most important ones, but I'd like to be thinking about why, because I know that you're also aware of your other stakeholders being the local community, the global community, your suppliers, your investors, and uh, so on. But, uh, you know, even the media, regulatory agencies, um, there are many different types of stakeholders, but customers, employees, and partners have a special place. And why is that? Let's take a closer look. By customers, we mean anyone who has a role in the decision or action to get or use whatever you provide. The employees are people that are paid for the work, maybe even volunteers, uh, it could be uh, part of your employee umbrella. Partners is usually uh, distributors, resellers, uh, franchises, alliance partners, outsourcers, and, and so forth. In any case, they all have something in common. They all have realities in terms of what they get and how they get it from you. They all have expectations and what they thought they were going to get and uh, you know what they're what they're trying to do in terms of using what they get from you. So this I call realities divided by expectations and it's all about mutual value. Your really good uh, customers, employees and partners are definitely understanding that you need a win and that they need a win. So it's a win-win uh, um, uh, pursuit for each of these three stakeholder groups. Now, customers fuel your growth by funding salaries, budgets, and dividends. You may think that investors and bank loans and uh, government grants and so forth are really the ones that provide you the money. And that may be the case uh, temporarily in some organizations, but ultimately it's your customers who make it all possible. If they are going away from you to other uh, alternatives, and not using uh, what you provide, then you're pretty much going out of business. Even if you're a nonprofit organization or a government agency, if no one's using what you've got, uh, there's no reason for your existence. So really customers are the, the primary source of your existence, your salaries, your budgets, and whatever's left over, uh, dividends and so forth for, um, for the, uh, you know, continued growth of the organization. Employees create what customers need and partners deliver what customers need by and large. Now there may be some overlap in some of these definitions and some exceptions, but by and large, you get the picture. You really do rely on customers, employees and partners to fuel your growth. Now the theme that we uh, see for customers, employees and partners is a little bit different. In each case, revenue, uh, productivity, um, brand integrity, integrity, but in each case, we're looking for retention. We wanna see the lifetime value of these particular um, stakeholders to increase over time as we're expecting our own value to increase over time as an entity. <clears throat> Uh, and then the approaches you're going to use for customer experience versus employee experience versus partner experience will differ somewhat in the touch points, but there's a lot of common threads. And most importantly, what you're seeing in common is the realities versus expectations for mutual value. And uh, the approach that you take for uh, listening to them, uh, acting on what you hear, um, translating that into um, uh, customized or you would say uh, differentiated uh, value that you're providing and engaging them is all going to be quite similar at its core. 
So we're going to be focusing on those commonalities. Now your core growth stakeholders are the ones that you rely on to get you the furthest, fastest in the coming year. This would be your high potential employees, your uh, high forecast growth customers and partners, especially the ones that are uh, lower cost to serve. So we're looking at that dynamic between the gain and the cost or cost to serve and the net gain then would be shown here in the green bars, Q1, Q2, 3, Q4. And so you wanna see the ones who are really driving your uptick quarter by quarter as the ones that are your core growth stakeholders. And with those, you really wanna hit the nail on the head. You want to be their first choice. You want them to give all their attention to you and not the alternatives out there so that you can grow faster uh, uh, and further than your competitors. All right, it's all about expectation sets. When a stakeholder's reality is less than the expectations, it's a poor experience, whether it be for employees or customers or partners. When the stakeholder's reality is matching or better than their experience, expectations, it's a good experience. So it really just boils down to a very easy, quick equation, realities divided by expectations. Here you can see it's just so simple. We're trying to close the gap between their realities and their expectations. We want it to be a one-to-one -one ratio. That's the whole summary of what employee experience management, customer experience management, and partner experience management are about. When you convey it so simply, it makes it easy for all the other organizations in the company to understand, oh, well, I have a role in understanding expectations and not messing up because if I drop the ball or I make the, the wrong turn, it can really upset the fruit basket for the entire company. So expectations and realities is a very powerful way to be talking about how we manage customer experience and what it actually is. Every purchase or every engagement that an employee or a partner has with our brand is an intended outcome. Why, why are they pursuing something with us? Why are they engaging with us? Well, there may be a moment, a reason for the moment, but overall, why are they engaging with your brand instead of some other? Now, this applies both to government as well as uh, business, uh, consumer, um, and everything in between. <laughs> so I really think it's universal. The people really want to, to re re reduce risk. They want to simplify, they want to expand, they want to empower or relieve. There are probably a hundred things that you could put in this list, but for you and your customers, your employees and your partners, it's important to do some very careful listening to what they're saying when they buy from you, or they go through the sales process, when they go through the service process, you usually have some records of that, or it's an opportunity to go listen, to observe, find those patterns of commonality across, across their journey. Uh, or you can even ask them, but uh, usually it's kind of subconscious. So you may, you may get a better sense of by just hearing what they're saying and finding those, those threads. That will tell you a lot about how you need to design the selecting, getting and using uh, processes that they go through to make their entire journey with you seamless and wonderful. In fact, across each step, there's a, a built-in subconscious judgment that customers, employees, and partners have. It's you know how we as humans um, evaluate <laughs> things moment by moment if we're going to stick with something or uh, you complain about something or abandon something uh, or engage you know to rally and uh, and be uh, enthusiastic about something. There's little built-in judgments that we have. If you could see into what those built-in subconscious judgments are and extract those and use them as your own metrics. See, think how powerful that would be instead of using the metrics of yesteryear. So always remember that your stakeholder experience is realities divided by expectations across that spectrum. When you hear the phrase CX or customer experience, employee experience or partner experience, you're probably thinking of an organization or a technology service or a CRM or 
Um, maybe you're thinking about uh, digitalization or there's that group of people that does that stuff. Um, I'd, I'd say that, uh, or you may be thinking about interactions with, with uh, employees or customers or partners. I'd say that all of those definitions are wrong. Surprising? Well, customer experience, as we've just been discussing it, is what customers experience. It's not what we're doing. That's customer experience management or employee experience management or partner experience management. Uh, we manage as a result of things going wrong, giving remedies, being reactive, or trying to be proactive, trying to design the, the right uh, experiences for them. But CX, EX, or PX is what they experience, and it's their realities in selecting, getting, and using a solution that enables their intended outcome. So always remember that it's what they do, but what we do is closing the gap, making a one-to-one -one ratio. That's our, that's our ultimate goal. So CX leadership, I would say, takes this whole concept of what we do a step further to say it's company-wide alignment to our customers' expectations or employees' or partners' expectations. And I love the way that Temkin has brought this to our attention in his maturity study, which has been done for about 10 years or so. And every year, the numbers don't change that much. Less than 25% are in the good category, as I see it. Uh, mobilizing just means that you're collecting customer feedback, you're acting on customers calling you and such. You, you have a mobilized program. That's great, but it's far from sufficient. What we need to do is operationalize these things, meaning that we're making it a routine that every October, or every uh, planning cycle, we're going to do this. Every onboarding, we're going to do that. So as you make your uh, experience management uh, efforts and activities a routine in your company, you're operationalizing experience. When you align, that means that you're taking voice of the customer, voice of the employee, voice of the partner, and tailoring that report to each uh, recipient in your organization, safety facilities, supplier management, legal, IT, uh, uh, you know, on, on down the line, HR, <laughs> accounting, uh, marketing, and, and so forth. When I was doing this in the 1990s, I created more than 50 reports so that every group in our company had their own cut of the data. And then I went to each group and did a workshop. We did a readout of the corporate and then their, their cut of it. We did a workshop that actually got down to the root issues and helped us to uh, drive significant change in preventing recurrence of those issues. And we made absolute uh, progress that was uh, rewarding for customers and hundreds and thousands of hours that they saved and that we saved in, in time and uh, worry and resources and, and all the nine yards that goes along with that. We created tons of savings and money for ourselves as well as growth. We held on to relationships that were fragile initially. So aligning was the whole process that I went through to drive uh, customer inspired action across the company with their each group having their own cut of things and their own actions. So the other side of aligning, the flip side of that coin, is that each group absorbs what the, the uh, stakeholder says, CX, EX, or PX. They adopt it and they are accountable for making change in the way that they decide things, the way that they make decisions, and the way that they give handoffs. So that's aligning, two sides of the coin. And then embedding means that you're taking these insights and uh, injecting them into the criteria for reviews and approvals and uh, meetings of all kinds, uh, training and development of all kinds, re recognition and rewards of all kinds. One example is that... Uh, our internal university contacted me and said, hey, we see how much uh, really interesting things are coming out from our voice of the customer. Could you please give us some vignettes or exercises or you know, little stories, things that we can inject into every single one of our internal courses? 
I thought, well, okay, you've got time management, you've got chemical engineering course, all the different kinds of courses that we offered internally. That's what we did. So experienced leadership goes beyond the touch points of loyalty programs, service, UX, uh, success, and so forth. These touch points are really important for uh, customizing value to customers, for um, remedying situations when it's really at a critical juncture, um, for uh, you know doing a variety of things. But we take it a step further when we go to experience management. We have programs that help us to be more proactive, but still they're programmatic and hard to scale. So, and they're hard to maintain momentum when you need collaboration and engagement from other groups. So experienced leadership is that uh, absolute essential step for the 2020s as we see expectations shifting frequently among employees, among partners, and among customers as their situations change. Um, we're in a pandemic. Or we're still dealing with the, the pandemic and its aftermath uh, throughout this decade, I'm sure. And as such, being nimble is the name of the game. When we're nimble as an entire organization, we're able to be first to market with the solutions or with communications that, that are essential to keeping the attention and engagement of our, our key stakeholders to fuel our growth. So company-wide alignment to those stakeholders' expectations might have been optional in the 2010s, but I think you'll, you'll find it to be increasingly essential in the 2020s and 2030s. Finding a balance across touch points, uh, traditional experience management and experience leadership is a key. You may have had 50% of your resources and, uh, or even 100% in touch points. You may have like a 70-30 breakout between touch points and experience management, but consider shifting a huge percentage over to experience leadership to be preventive of problems, to have less need for all those loyalty uh, enticements, to have less need for all those uh, fixes and the uh, contact centers and so forth, to be more proactive and value generating rather than value saving and value rescuing. Again, what we have in common across CX, EX, and PX is those realities versus expectations toward mutual value. So the way that you listen, the way that you act on that is going to be very similar whether you're managing uh, or leading CX, EX, or PX. For example, in this, in this model, you can substitute the word customer for employee or for partner because their voice is where it all starts. You're trying to listen to understand what's going on. Uh, how do you stack up to alternatives that they have? Um, what are some of the needs that are emerging? So we listen to, to the voice and that should inform our strategy at the corporate level and on down the line. It should also inform our culture. This doesn't happen later. This is just a ribbon in the back that's holding it all together and just for space needs, the words for customer centricity over here, but it actually starts happening here. If you're listening to them, that is an act of customer centricity and you can even be more con uh, customer centric than, than what we typically do by not just asking about us, but what are you trying to do? How well are we helping you? What else do you need? What, uh, what do you, uh, what would, what help, what would help? How could we help you uh, achieve that intended outcome better, faster, easier, uh, cheaper, and so forth. So customer voice needs to be analyzed for patterns across the different sources, uh, connections to operational data that we have, um, and then also connections to uh, the, the financials. How much cost is represented by the people who are upset by this thing? How much revenue is represented by them? Any aspect of uh, revenue or cost that you're associating with customer wishes for the positive or the, for negative is a, a, a use of customer lifetime value. And that helps managers to be motivated. They can see a dollar reason some kind of uh, quantitative reason why they should shift from the status quo and be engaged in improvement and innovation. It shows them how much effort they need to be putting into improvement and innovation in balance with everything else that's on their plate. But it really is the motivating factor. 
Now, engaging internally and externally are mirror images of each other because we're already engaging our employees and our partners and our customers as stakeholders from the get-go with the voice. Um, we're engaging them as we use agile practices and such. But we need to be engaging internally among all these parties that play a role in creating that experience in enabling partners and employees and customers to do what they do um, much more boldly. And uh, the, the key to that is uh, tying into things that are already going on for those employees, for those groups, um, helping them shift their charter in terms of um, why are those organizations, uh, why are those entities, those key stakeholders, um, making it possible for their existence, and so forth. So you can learn about uh, how to engage internally through Clear Actions resources. This is our huge specialty. How do you engage the non-customer facing, the non-employee facing, the non-partner facing entities in your organization and ecosystem in really adopting, uh, absorbing, adopting, and applying uh, those insights that you have so that they make a difference more proactively and with much more strategic impact. That means that when you're following this recipe, the retention, the loyalty, and the business results happen on, almost automatically. That experience excellence is almost automatic, and you don't have to have such a large budget and uh, workforce in providing remedies and enticements. So the whole idea is you mobilize this entire system, you operationalize the system in tandem, you align and you embed all uh, simultaneously. You're planting baby seeds in each of these four levels. It's not like you do one level one year and move to the next level the next year. So again, you can find more about this in all of Clear Action's resources. How is experienced leadership a team sport? Like I said, you rely on legal and IT and supplier management and uh, engineering and so forth, each to do their part. There are plenty of uh, stories about public relations fiascos, a company that uh, made a wrong decision and now their CEO is uh, called to testify in front of Congress, or their stock is tanking for a while because there was a, a safety issue or, or some kind of... Um, you know, unethical situation where people are in, in uh, up in arms, the public is uh, outraged at uh, the behavior of the organization. There's plenty of stories of that. And what you can learn from those stories is that there is no key on your keyboard that is not uh, useful or necessary. There is no group in your company that is immune to or excused from their responsibility in making the experience great for employees, customers, and partners as the stakeholders that fuel your growth. They're all needed. We just need to uh, communicate to them in the right way so they understand the expectations and the realities and the gap and what they need to do to close that gap. So learn more when you go to clearaction.com. You'll see the ex employee experience playbook, the partner experience playbook, the customer experience playbook and the marketing operations maturity playbook. Marketing is the organization that creates awareness about your brand and communicates so much about the value proposition. They have to be brought into the fold as well. All of these are customer facing or employee facing groups, partner facing groups. It's up to these groups to take that intelligence that they've gained about expectations and, and realities and share that with the whole company and engage the whole company in owning that uh, to be aligned company-wide with these expectations for that one-to-one -one ratio. That's how we save a tremendous amount of money. That's how we save a tremendous amount of turnover and resources. And that's how we grow very substantially through experienced leadership. You can learn more in the advanced course for specifically for executives and experts. Uh, this uh, shows the, the commonalities for CX, EX, and PX throughout five topics. And you get a tremendous amount of resources with all of this that's designed to be absorbed by you in as little as seven and a half hours. 
So uh, it's a really great resource that's uh, respecting your time and easy to do as self-paced or live classes on Fridays with me. Even better is to join the Experience Value Exchange. Here we have five minute resources, 15 minute resources, 40 minute resources in the form of uh, videos, articles, uh, templates, uh, even um, fluid templates that you can uh, take a, a scenario with wisdom nuggets and uh, apply it to your specific situation fluidly. Um, Q and A, all kinds of things that are driving how you have the skill set for inspiring customer centered action, for energizing enterprise use of insights, for motivating lifetime value mindset, for driving aligned motivations, consistency to intentions, and respecting interdependencies. For all of these, you get a customized uh, set of resources depending on your answers to the onboarding questionnaire. So when you go onto your homepage, it's all customized to you. And then uh, you get ribbons for uh, your achievements in each of these six areas. So these are the competencies we need in the 2020s for experienced leadership and how you can get there. So please join me next time for our LinkedIn Live uh, session about customer experience, employee experience, and partner experience and how they intersect, how we can really grow our business from these, from these uh, areas of alignment company-wide. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.